Yo, 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 what is going on, my beautiful brothers and sisters, fellow radiators of love? My name is Jamal Pope, a.k.a. J. Phoenix, and this is going to be your astrology forecast for Tuesday, December 26th of 2023. Thank you so much for joining me in this video. Hopefully you guys had a wonderful holiday season with your loved ones, your family, your friends. Hopefully you guys got the things that you wanted this year. And I, I had a great holiday. You know, I had, I had a good holiday and stuff. Got to see family and friends and stuff. There was there, there was one like tense moment yesterday that I had with my sister. But you know, I love you and uh, really hope that uh, you know I have nothing. I have nothing but love for you, sis. So, but we had like one little tense moment yesterday, and it's kind of actually interesting that this full moon is happening like on her sun because <laughs> she's a Cancer sun at three degrees, and this moon, this full moon's happening like right on her sun, pretty much. So, in any event, because <clears throat> I know she, I know she's going through a lot. I know she's releasing a lot. I wish she would. Sometimes I do wish that my family would like ask me about the astrology. I don't go to them about the astrology. Because that's just one of those cardinal rules that you just don't, per se, give unsolicited advice. Now, astrology is integrated into my daily language. But as far as, like, actually just giving, like, like particular unsolicited advice, that's, like, one of those cardinal rules that you just don't break in a, as an astrologer. But sometimes I do wish my family would ask, like, hey, what's going on in the stars? And I'm like, ah. And I'm like, hey, how are the stars affecting me today? I'm like, ah. But, you know, I choose... I obviously choose not to do that because it's just, it's unsolicited and it's not, it is what it is, you know what I'm saying? So, in any event, hopefully you guys have a very, had a wonderful holiday. Let's go ahead and hop into the transits for today. I, I don't plan on making this video super, super long and it's a little bit later for me getting this video out. But we do have a full moon in Cancer today. That full moon will be happening at 4 degrees, 58 minutes of Cancer. Now, what's interesting about this full moon, of course, is that you have the sun, which will be in trying to Jupiter today. Um, it's not exact, but it's still in trying to Jupiter. Jupiter here at 5 degrees of Taurus. We also have Mercury in square to Neptune for this. Mercury, which is still retrograde, which will be coming direct in just a few days' time. And then, of course, Mars is actually involved with this as well. Even though Mars isn't exactly squaring Neptune, it's certainly uh, within that two-degree orb adds a bit of spice to this square. This is not a bad full moon. I would say that it's a little odd. It's a little auspicious. I, I would say that this is a full moon where we can actually release a lot of stuck emotions you know, anytime that you get a full moon, yeah, generally it's about releasing and stuff like that. This is a full moon where we can release a lot of stuck emotions, a lot of stuck energy. And being that this is four degrees, almost five degrees, it makes this full moon very Uranian and very mercurial. And because it's in that first decade, it really has to do with the self. I would say even more so, it has to probably deal with more childhood stuff too. So any type of emotions from childhood that you may feel like are holding you back or perceptions that you have of your childhood that may be holding you back, this will be a good time to release those things. I also say that because we, of course, do have Mercury and Mars, like I said, in Sagittarius, which is all about our vision, and the Neptune and Pisces, which, like I said, this can be all about the way that we are perceiving, you know, and it's all the mutable signs are about perception, right? So how are we perceiving this reality? What thoughts are going into that? What actions are we going to that? What beliefs do we have that are causing, that are structuring the way that we perceive our lives, the way that we perceive society and ask ourselves, you know, is this positive in nature? Is this uplifting in nature? Is this going to contribute to my expansion from a spiritual sense? Or is this something that's going to hold me back? I think with a full moon like this, being that, being that it is at this cusp of the fourth to fifth degree, like I said, it's pretty Uranian and it's very mercurial. So it's very air. I feel like this is a full moon <clears throat> where we can release a lot of this communication, if you will, or these different ideas, these different thoughts that have contributed to us feeling the ways that we feel about certain things, right? 
Now, of course, like I said, the sun in Capricorn is still in trying to Jupiter, which is still retrograde in Taurus. This is about acknowledging those beautiful things that we still do have in our life and building from that place where we may feel like, you know, and maybe we're not exactly where we thought we were going to be. You know, maybe we don't have the things that we thought we were going to have or the amount of money that we thought we were going to have. But I'm sure if you look around you, you can see just how much stuff, like physical stuff that you've accumulated. But also hopefully the holidays here were a great reminder of, you know, even if things aren't like perfect, even if you may not necessarily see eye to eye with your fa with your family and your friends, they're still there. And this is going to be this is going to be very, very fucking important going to 2024 because. We need the connection and we need the warmth that can come from family and unconditional love more than ever going into 2024, going into the middle of this decade of the 2020s. Because we are about to experience a lot of disclosures, a lot of revealments, a lot of revelations. We're about to experience this sort of pendulum swing, if you will, where I feel like in many ways we have taken things to the extremes and too far. And hitting the middle of this decade which will see Pluto fully move into Aquarius, which will see Neptune move into Aries, right? Which will see Uranus move into Gemini. We have a lot of shifting energy that's happening and a lot of energy that no one alive has experienced. Like I said, Pluto going into Aquarius, right? This, these, are, these outer planets are moving from the latter signs of the Zodiac into the early signs of the Zodiac. So this is going to be one of those moments where we are having to process so much collective subconscious shit that sometimes we can confuse it for our own. Sometimes we can look at someone else's trauma and trials and tribulation and use that as a filter when we look back at our own memories. And then we can get confused and be like, you know what? I experienced that as well. And we do that because we want to connect with people. The four degrees is Uranian. So it wants to feel like it belongs somewhere. So sometimes we do that. It, we do it in the positive and the negative. Sometimes in the like in the positive, say if you feel like you want to belong with someone. Say if you want to, I don't know. Let's say you feel like you belong, you know making a million dollars, whatever, right? Maybe you surround yourself with people that make a million dollars. That could be more of the positive side, I guess you could say, if that's what you really want. But let's say that you feel like you belong feeling like a victim. So then you surround yourself with people that are victims and you put yourself in this echo chamber, but then you look back at your own life, you look back at your own memories and those memories start to alter because of the filter that you put on them. Now, that's not to say that you didn't go through challenges in the past. I'm just saying that I feel like that there's a lot of people out there that have this filter when it comes back, when it comes to looking at their past, when it comes to looking through these memories and looking at their childhood and painting them in a certain way that it seems so traumatic when really it's not as traumatic as you think it is. Now, that's going to seem very, very insensitive to some people, but I do feel like the next decade is going to start to reveal a lot of that, and it's going to start to reveal, or some people are going to look back and be like, maybe that wasn't as bad as I thought it was, which is why I think it's important to mend those relationships that you can mend, mend those relationships that you know, like I said, that you commend. I think that that's super important going into this, uh, this, the second half of this decade. Let's read the Sabian symbol for four degrees, right? Well, let's see. What we got. I already got it pulled up here. At a railroad crossing, a car races with a train. 
This symbol implies the desire or the ability to complete with or take on society as if life were a race or something to be conquered. The car is a vehicle for the individual and the train is a vehicle for the masses. There is often a need for caution. The individual will not always survive a collision with the, most, with the more powerful collective. It may not work to be insisting bravely that your individual needs should be considered. The collective has too much momentum. If someone pits themselves and their energies continually against society, sooner or later, they are likely to lose. Not looking to the consequences of one actions, running against the grain of others, cars, trains, individual rights, rebelling, split-second timing, taking one's chances. Recklessness, being prepared to sacrifice others, working until one drops, hmm, not knowing when to stop, emotional panic, spinning out of control, going off the rails. Yeah, I think we have to find a balance between individuality and being a part of a collective. And I do feel like there are a lot of people, especially those in the spiritual community, that just purposefully go against the grain just to go against the grain. And they can't find the value in some of the more collective things. For example, I have a Facebook friend. She was talking about how being a part of the spiritual community for years had her being a Grinch during the Christmas time. And she didn't even realize it, but she loves Christmas. You know, she has a, she has a husband, beautiful kids and everything like that. But I, I can see what she's saying. Cause there's an element of the spiritual community where it's like, Oh, well, Christmas is this, and it's a commercial holiday and blah, 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 blah. I'm like, no, but it, the meaning of Christmas is something that you assign to it. You know what I mean? And you can still participate in some of these collective celebrations despite what you may have learned or despite whatever preconceived notions that you have coming into it so i can see that like sometimes i feel like those of us in the spiritual community we may go against the grain simply for going against the grain and we can't accept we can't accept or see any value of kind of going along with the collective and I think we all have those things. For example, I love football, right? I'm, I'm huge. I'm huge into sports. There's a lot of people in the spiritual community. They're like, eh, sports are so barbaric and they're not dated. We shouldn't. I don't like sports. I don't like. And I'm like, screw that. I love my sports. Do I get a little emotional about it sometimes? Yes. I'm an Eagles fan, so it comes to the territory. But I still love sports, and I think that there are lessons that can come from sports, especially team sports. There are a lot of lessons there. I feel like some people in the spiritual community kind of need to play some sports to learn what it's like to be on a team and not feel like you have to do everything by yourself. There is power in numbers. And the fact of the matter is that this collective subconscious that is going to be more revealed and we're about to see more of the human shadow, it's not going to be one person or one hero or one messiah that's going to come and extinguish the shadow. And have to face it for us. We have to take the personal accountability and the collective accountability to face the human shadow head on. Teamwork makes the dream work and move into a more positive future. So there has to be this sort of balance, like I said, between the individuality, expressing ourselves, and knowing when to kind of rebel and go against the grain, but also when to embrace. The collective. All right. So let's go ahead and get into the cards. I do think that this is a full, like this full moon. I think it's going to be a powerful one for, like I said, um, obviously the, the buzzword for a full moon is release, right? Being that this is cancer, it's going to be emotional stuff. It's going to be family stuff. It's going to be childhood stuff, right? So, and with a Mercury, the planet of communication, Mars, the planet of action, war, making a square to Neptune and Pisces, right? Which is very strong. I'm saying that Neptune, if anything, is going to win this square. Mars has a little bit of power, but the fact that Mars is with a planet that's in its detriment with Mercury in retrograde, mind you, Neptune's definitely going to win this one, right? Which even points more to the fact that because Mercury and Mars are personal planets and Mercury, like I said, is in detriment, retrograde, and Sagittarius, and Mars is a very individual sign with Mercury here, 
and a sign of Sag, which is all about the belief and stuff like that. But Neptune, the cl- like trying to race this train in a car and trying to get across the tracks before the train hits you, like we kind of have to have a bit of humility here and kind of put some of those things aside because Mars and Mercury are not going to win this square. They're just not going to win it. It's going to be Neptune that wins it. So, and then, of course, like I said, you have the sun and cap, which is trining over to Jupiter, which is nice. It's beautiful. It's harmonious. But So the, this is a full moon where we really are having to release a lot of these preconceived notions and a lot of these stuck emotions that we have that are acting like anchors to our energy. Emotions are water. They're meant to move and flow. But if we hold on to them, they can become like anchors. They can become like those, like those, like, those like chain, like those iron balls, like those chains, if you will, or like the, it can be like the fucking. Hold on, let's see the Mario. Uh, let's see the freaking. Uh, what's it called? The freaking. The thing in Mario, the, like the ball, whatever, like that. Dang it! I don't. I can't remember what they're freaking called. But, oh, this bitch, this thing right here, like, that, this is what stuck emotions can become. Hold on, let me, like, this right here, right? They become like this ball with the freaking teeth that barks for some reason, which is ironic, actually. Because when I when I think of cancer, I think of werewolves. As far as like a mystical creature, it makes sense, right? They become werewolves during the full moon and shit. They get their power from the full moon, as do vampires, ironically. And they, they kind of vampires are Libra, my uh, by the way. But like, this is what I think about. It's like this. Oh, the chomp. Yeah, the chain chomp. You know. And what's crazy, too, is that, like, this thing, and then you'll wonder why people can't get close to you. It's because you have this fucking chain chomp surrounding you, and when someone gets close, it's, it tries to freaking bite their head off. And then you wonder, it's like, oh, well, how come I can't be close to people? It's because you have these stuck emotions that you can't, that you haven't allowed to process. You've gone through multiple moon cycles. And you haven't been able to properly release these things via meditation, via grounding, via forgiveness, humility, practicing gratitude. So that's when people try to get close to you. This thing comes off at people and bites their ass. So we got to we got to learn how to release those emotions. We got to learn how to allow those things to move through. Yeah, I know it can be difficult. We all, I think we all have stuck emotions. But over time, they coalesce and turn into one of these guys. And then, like I said, you wonder why you can't get close to people. It's because you have such a guard up. And I think it's there's a difference between establishing healthy emotional boundaries and establishing boundaries where this guy is guarding you. You know what I'm saying? There's a difference between those two. So, anyways. Let's get into the cards. I'm using one of my favorite decks today. One of my favorite decks. I love this deck. It's a, uh, it's a pretty direct and to the point, but it's very. It has like the, it has like this grandfather kind of energy to it. <clears throat> Excuse me. So, I I really like this deck a lot. So, all right. So, what do we have for the full moon? In Cancer, well, we have the Two of Cups. Oh, I mean, we, you could definitely connect with someone in a more powerful, more intimate way. But are you afraid of that intimacy? Are you afraid to let that person in? 
Are you afraid to do the healing work, the shadow work? But this is about connecting consciously with somebody. It doesn't have to be a lover, although it can be a lover, but it can be a family member, it can be a friend. But this is about connecting empathically with someone on a deeper level and sharing that intimacy. And like I said, intimacy doesn't mean a lover. It doesn't mean sex. But then it's another thing that we kind of have to recalibrate is what is intimacy? But that's what this card is. It's a card of intimacy. We also have, we do have the chariot card in reverse. Now, I think this is interesting, you know, with this card. And uh, there's, there could be this feeling where we want to feel like we've arrived at something, that we want to feel like we are achieving some sort of victory. I think this is one of those things where, you know, maybe we feel like, you know, we feel like we have to just go out into the world and achieve all these things and achieve all these successes and have all of these things. And I think this is about realizing the successes that are already here, the victories that we have already achieved. You know what I mean? I, I don't think that we feel like, I don't think we have to go all the way out into the world. And remember, this is Mercury, Mars, and Sag. Sag is all about kind of going out and traveling and seeing the world and exploring. But this is square to Neptune, and Neptune's going to win this square. So, you know, this is, you know, we don't need to feel like we have to go way out there for all the answers. The answers are probably a lot closer to home than we realize. And that can be scary for some people because... Some people don't necessarily have a great relationship with their home, with their family. And they're always seeking something outside of themselves, something way, way out there. And really, you don't have to travel that far to find those answers. Bottom of the deck, we do have the five of pentacles in reverse, right? Five of pentacles in reverse. Yeah, so there's no need to feel like you're on the outside looking in. There's no need to feel like someone... Like these, what's cool about this card is that it shows like these three, like, I see them as like businessmen, right? But they're like controlling this dude's fate. And there's like a freaking, what was that? Like a lynx that's like falling with them. There's actually five of them, right? And he feels like he's at the whim of these external forces, but this is reverse. So you don't have to feel like you're at the whim of all of these external sources or powerful people around you or people with money and influence and blah, 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 whatever. You don't have to feel like you're on the outside looking in, right? You know, feeling like you're left out, right? And who knows, maybe that game that they play, maybe you want to be left out of it. Because if that was a game that was really worth playing, Everyone will be playing it. I mean, yeah, like it's it's one of those interesting things. Like there's elements of that game which are tough and it's not for everybody. I'm talking about the more toxic aspect of that game. The more uh, manipulative aspect of that game. The more taking advantage of other people aspect of that game. Do you really want to play that game? Just because it seems like they have the cars and the yachts and the the private jets and the this and the that and the whatever, right? But are they happy? Are they fulfilled? Are they connected spiritually? Because even they still have problems. It just looks like they have problems in a 5,000 square foot house instead of a 1,000 square foot apartment. But they still have their issues as well. So that's what I'm saying. Like, no, there's like no amount of money that you can make is going to just eliminate a lot of these issues. This is a collective, this is a collective evolution that we are going through and a collective shadow that we have to face no matter where you are on the on the financial ladder and stuff like that. So don't feel like you are don't have this feeling that you are being left out. Because you're not. Because you're still here. You're on your in this human experience, you're in this plane of existence, you're experiencing this, and everybody has their role, and everyone has their unique superpowers and their unique gifts. The answers are a lot closer to home than we realize. That's where the intimacy really is. We don't need to feel like we have to go way, way out there to find something. It's actually a lot closer to home than we realize. 
that is going to do it for your full moon and cancer astrology forecast. I hope that you all enjoyed it. If you did, please like, share, and subscribe. I definitely appreciate it. If you'd like to have a personal reading with me, beloved, you can follow the link in the description below to my website, jphoenix.com. If you haven't already, be sure to check out my January horoscope where I essentially do a overview of the different transits that are going to be coming in the month of January, highlighting some of the major points. I made a calendar for you guys as well. And I also drew uh, cards for all 12 signs, including an Oracle card for all signs for everybody at the end. So be sure to check that out. I will also have a link to that video in the description below. So be sure to check that out so you can be better prepared to navigate this incredible January that we have coming forward. There's going to be a lot of crazy energy, a lot of intense energy, a lot of transformation. It's going to be a powerful one. So you definitely want to check out that video. But anyways, y'all take care. Stay blessed. Have a wonderful Tuesday. I will see y'all on the next strategy forecast. Peace.